So this will be an energy read for you today. So I uh, hope you like the video. If you do, please do like it. Um, hit me subscribe. Go ahead and subscribe. And uh, thank you very much for watching. Hi, I'm Mark, and this is my journey through tarot. Come on. Well, like I've been saying, let's take some time just for us, you know? Um, lay everything aside for just a few minutes, take a deep breath, uh, get your thoughts uh, in one place and think about what's important to you right now and uh, we'll see how that goes. So this is the Chinese tarot deck by, I don't know how to pronounce this, Wei Gulang. Perhaps you can see it there and make your own determination as to how to pronounce it. But this is by U.S. Games Systems. And uh, I've had these cards for a bit, and I've been uh, playing with them. And so I thought I'd just uh, show you uh, what we've got here. So they come in this typical, uh, you know, little box. It's not anything to speak of, really. And um, the um, the inserts in here are, again, what you typically find with cards. And the, the deck, the uh, instruction pamphlet, is just uh, a typical little uh, instruction pamphlet with the typical uh, suggestions in one language as to how to divine the cards. So there. And um, But the cards themselves are pretty cool. I've enjoyed using them, and they're not hard to uh, interpret. Now, this is a really neat design on the back. I don't know if you can see it, but it's got like a warrior here with their hands outstretched, and then all this going on, and another warrior upside down here. So that's the back, but then the cards themselves are really beautiful. They're good size, and uh, the art is interesting, and they're very easy to read, uh, even though they don't have the typical little uh, signals that uh, a lot of cards give you as to what this means and what that means, and you know, you know what I mean? So there we go. So this is the uh, the Chinese tarot deck. And, you know, I like to spread them out like this for two reasons. One, if you're working with somebody, you can let them uh, kind of spread them out this way if they're not com comfortable with shuffling and you really want them to get involved with all the cards. And two, um, you know, when I was just uh, looking at uh, readers online, I always wondered, what does the rest of the deck look like besides what I got to see in just the short little presentation? So this is the Chinese tarot deck, and I like it. So take a deep breath. Let it out slowly. Close your eyes, maybe relax. Uh, stop the tape, get up, get a drink of water or a cup of tea, and just um, decide uh, what you'd like uh, this MG read to tell you. Six cards, it'll be a full cup across. One, two, three, four, five. It'll be interesting to see how well the read matches up for what you need to here today. So the signifier of this is going to be the Ten of Swords. Wow. Ten of Swords is a pretty difficult card to get. You know, this is typically depicted like the guy on the ground with Ten Swords in his back. So it's an end. I mean, it's, it's a dead stop in something that's happening. So that's the signifier. The challenge to that is going to be oof, the Eight of Swords. And uh, so that's really feeling uh, trapped. You know, these guys don't have a way to, um, they have to make, they have to take this fight. So the end of a cycle being challenged by really having to take the fight. So sometimes when we get to the end, it seems pointless to uh, wage a battle, but it's not. The base of this reading then is, uh, oh, inverted. That's okay. So if this were upright, this is the lever. So this is number six of the major arcana. And this is about partnerships and finding just the right combination uh, to make uh, something happen. Uh, in reverse, I've got to tell you, I don't uh, particularly like to read reverse cards because I don't trust my intuition about them. And I haven't taken the time to learn some rote uh, intuitions really about all the cards. So I just don't use them. But when presented, and I try very hard to keep the cards straight, but uh, when they come, I do try to address it. So the lover's in reverse. I want to say it almost, you know, the, the thing you want to say is falling out of love. Um, 
And I'm going to have to say that that's that's it, but maybe not in in the most in the deepest sense. Just falling maybe out of like or out of favor for a thing. Uh, yeah. Uh, the uh, past of this reading is the Ace of Cups, and the Ace of Cups is a great big offer of of uh, nourishment. Okay, that's something that will uh, uh, warm your emotional soul, and so that's what uh, this lovely uh, girl is offering up there. And then in the sky, of this reading uh, we have the Knight of Cups, and so the, you know the Knight is the warrior of the royal suite. Okay, he uh, is entitled when he's given uh, the cup, he makes sure that he raises it, he proposes the toast, he uh, makes it uh, sure that it's noticed and, and gets its due. So this Knight of Cups, we're talking about compassion and emotion, but we're talking about um, really uh, knowing uh, that you want that uh, credit, actually. And then the um, likely outcome of this then is the Six of Swords. Of course, moving out of troubled water. So, um, you know, this is typically depicted by a boat with six sword in it, and they're paddling uh, from, from troubled water to something calmer. So, you know, this tells me, as opposed to these guys who, who are, you know, advancing into the fight, uh, these girls really seem to be on the, on the end of the fight where it's just about finished, and they're about to lay down their swords in, in retreat. That's just how I see it at this minute. So that's what we've got there. So we've got the Ten of Swords, End of Cycle, Dead Stop. Okay. Challenged by uh, the Eight of Swords really feeling uh, trapped. Um, the Lovers kind of falling out of like uh, with a thing. And then uh, the Ace of Cups is a, an offer of compassion. And then in the sky we have this knight who's willing to fight for all these emotions. But what is the actual self of this day that we've got right now? The self is a chariot. Okay, so things are uh, expected to move on at a rapid pace. But why? That's in the environment of what? It's in the environment of the three of uh, wands, which are plans, long-term planning. And this fellow's plans seem to be askew. I mean, he's trying to get things going, but it doesn't seem to be a focused uh, effort. I mean, it is a focused effort, but, you know, it's it's problematic. It's it's going to require some, some doing. In the sky of this reading, or rather in the hopes and the fears, it's the page of swords. And this is the page who's bringing, you know, he's a messenger. He's bringing this truth, this justice, this rule uh, forward to be noticed. But um, this fellow has a very determined look on his face. And so he's a very strong page. He's, he has intentions to move himself up to a knight. That's what I would say. And then the likely outcome of the whole thing is strength. Well, you know, that is what we need to have. And so... That's what's going to get us through everything. I wonder if this is going to be a particularly uh, challenging day because it certainly does seem so. But that's what I got. So that was a pretty strong read. So we start out with the Ten of Swords. I mean, really a stab in the back. But in the end, we know that we do have the strength to get through it. So, you know, stiff upper lip. I'm Mark. My journey through tarot. Tomorrow's another day. Stop by. We'll do it again. Ciao for now.